What's going on my exotic family? It's your boy Dre and welcome back to another video. Um, so today's video we're going to uh, dive a little deep into um, talking about uh, practices in the reptile hobby that we should be practicing, um, especially when keeping multiple reptiles. Um, so we're going to talk about quarantine, um, what you should do and why it's important. Um, as you can see, I have M'Baku right here. Um, he's going to be our guest star today in today's video um, and while we talk about uh, quarantine. So uh, without further ado, we'll go ahead and just jump right into it. So what exactly is quarantine? What does the term quarantine mean? Um, quarantine can be applied to a lot of different topics, um, but for we'll keep it about reptiles, obviously. Um, but basically, quarantine is basically where you set, where you have an animal that you just purchased or you, re, or you took in or someone gave it to you, and basically you want to keep them separate from your current reptiles. So basically, you set them up in a very basic enclosure, um, basically to monitor them um, for no illnesses. Um, you want to make sure that they're eating properly and they don't have anything that can pass on to your other reptiles. So the first thing I want to touch on is basically you know, handling. Um, reptiles in quarantine shouldn't really be handled only because um, it kind of adds to their stress, especially if it's a new animal or a baby you just brought home and you're trying to establish that animal um, in your collection you don't want to handle them as often because it can stress them out. Um, so that's something that I do personally. Um, a lot of you that have seen a lot of the you know snakes that I rehomed or brought in or anything like that, I don't handle them. Um, I just let them be, let them do their thing. What are you doing? And kind of just let them get used to me and used to you know um, how I do things here. All right, are you good? Okay. Um, <clears throat> so another thing is duration of quarantine. How do you know how long to quarantine this particular animal? Um, and for me, I think that's personal preference. Um, some people do 30 days, some people do 90 days, some people do 60 days. Um, also what exactly you're quarantining them for can play a factor. Uh, if it's like I said, a new animal from a pet store, you know, a breeder, a reptile shop, um, and you notice that there's nothing wrong with them, you are literally just quarantining them. Just for the simple fact that you wanna make sure that they are healthy. Um, me personally, I do 30 days. Um, I wanna make sure I'm getting um, consi good consistent meals in them. So in, in addition to uh, the duration. Um, when setting up a uh, quarantine, you know, enclosures or some people call uh, have tubs, basically they should be very basic setups um, kind of the bare minimum. The reason being is because uh, you want to watch out for any you know type of mites, any type of issues um, that can be caused um, by or not even caused, but just anything that may be wrong with that particular animal. Um, so you don't want anything in there affecting that or making it worse or causing the issue. Um, so you want to. Me personally, I like paper towel, newspaper. Um, that's good. Um, kind of. First, you can, you know, it. you can, are you choking me right now? Are you, are you choking me right now? You're gripping a little hard there, sir. Okay, sorry. So, I like bare minimum um, setups when it comes to quarantine for the simple fact that it's easier to maintain if there is something wrong. Um, you can kind of take out the newspaper or the, um, paper towel, um, wipe it up, and especially when treating, you know, when and if treating for mites, it's easier to see, easier to maintain. Um, but also in quarantine, there should not be any loose substrate um, because that can cause issues. So very basic setup. Uh, we need to make sure we're, uh, we are using or hitting the proper um, temperature requirements, um, you know, heating and everything, that definitely plays a factor. So, okay, hold on, this guy is definitely choking me. What are we doing, sir? Ugh. 
<laughs> you gotten strong. Ugh. There we go. Good? Okay. Don't choke me again. Um, so, we definitely want to make sure that um, we're not overdoing the quarantine enclosure because it kind of defeats the purpose of a quarantine enclosure. A quarantine enclosure is for the reptile to be monitored if they are sick um, to help them get better. Um, so we want to make sure that we're not overdoing it um, because obviously once they get out of quarantine, then we can set them up in their, you know, their nice, fancy, done up enclosure. So we just want to make sure that we aren't overdoing it and we're not over stressing them out, especially if it is a new reptile nine times out of 10. It's if, even if it's not a new reptile, it could be an established reptile, but it may be new to you. Um, so we just want to make sure that um, we give them the proper um, time to, for one, get through the stress of moving into a new enclosure, but two, dealing with um, kind of a bare enclosure and kind of just letting them adjust on their own time. So. This part is very important, obviously all this is important, but this next part is very important. Things to watch out for while your reptiles are in quarantine. So when you put your reptiles in quarantine, what are we looking for? We are looking for you know, what their appearance is like, um, what their eating habits are like, what their poop and their urination is like, um, what their scales are like, what their mouth is like, because they can get scale or mouth rot. Um, those are definitely things that we should be looking out for while they're in quarantine, which is the purpose of quarantine, because then you can catch it. Um, you know, you can either treat it, um, you can either take them to a vet, which is probably gonna be the best answer depending on what the issue is. Um, so those are definitely things we should be looking out for. Um, it's very, very important that if there is something wrong with the reptile, um, that we do catch it. Um, that way it can be treated and the animal can, you know, live a long and healthy life. So uh, that is definitely one of, you know, the big points of quarantine is to make sure that we're not just setting up the enclosure, putting the reptile in there and leaving them, but we also want to make sure that it is effective. So lastly, um, and this is kind of a no-brainer, obviously if you go through all of that, um, you know, you set your reptile enclosure up, your quarantine enclosure, um, the reptile, uh, you know, let's say you get a reptile that comes in and he has uh, upper respiratory and you treat him, you know, he's been in quarantine for 60 days um, and he does fine, he's taking meals for you now at your discretion, um, at your discretion because everything, everyone's different. Um, you know, I may do something different um, and you may do something different, but at your discretion, um, you'd be the better judge um, to when you want to move them into your reptile room, if that applies to you. Some people don't have a reptile room. Some people, you know, just have their reptiles wherever they like. But point, point is, you would then be able to set them up in their actual enclosure um, to where they can, you know, thrive and live. And it's more of a naturalistic environment. Um, one thing I do want to point out, if you do have a reptile collection or a reptile room or have other, you know, reptiles and you are, you do have an animal in quarantine that does have something or you have an animal in quarantine period, it is very important and it is imperative that if you handle your reptiles on a daily basis, the ones in quarantine, if you do need to handle them for whatever reason, let's say you have to pull them out to clean the enclosure, um, do it last. Um, that way you've already handled your reptiles for the day um, and then you go handle the one in quarantine. Um, that way you don't have to come back and if there is something there, you give a chance of spreading it to your reptiles. And always, 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 whether, the animal, whether there's an animal in quarantine or not, when it comes to reptiles, always wash your hands, um, you know, Cleanliness, obviously. Um, yes, these are captive born animals, but they still have natural um, germs just like we do. So we should always make sure we're washing our hands. Um, I feel like that's a no brainer, but whatever, to use our own. I keep bottles of hand sanitizer. I usually have two big bottles in my reptile room, um, which I usually, um, you know, use in between taking in and out of reptiles. Um, I currently have no reptiles in quarantine right now. Everyone in my reptile room is full health. Um, everybody's eating good, everybody's pooping good, everybody's living the life, um, and we are getting ready for winter here in Ohio, so um, everybody is doing great. Uh, but that's just kind of 
my take on quarantine. Um, it is very important to me simply because it can prevent um, issues down the line. Um, this is not my first go at reptiles. I've had reptiles before. Um, you know, and I've, I have taken in reptiles that were sick and I was not knowledgeable enough to know at that time what to look out for. And it did spread through, you know, my collection and kill off some of my animals. So this is kind of not even just an educational thing, but a learning. It was part of a learning experience for me. And I wanted to share that with you guys. That way I can possibly uh, help someone else or prevent someone else from making the same mistake. So... <clears throat> With that being said, me and M'Baku hope you guys enjoyed the video while he tried to choke me out. <laughs> but uh, we hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I really appreciate you guys watching. Um, if you don't, follow me on uh, Instagram at DW Exotics. I greatly appreciate it. Um, make sure you hit that notification bell and make sure you subscribe to the channel. Um, and then as always, stay exotic.